Okay. So, um, welcome to photop.com. There's going to be a little bit of class interaction on this one. So those of us still in the chat, I need to come up with two photos that I could combine together. So today, just to make things interesting, I'm going to be taking suggestions from the audience of two photos I could put together. So who wants to give me a photo we're going to start with? Give me my base image. Give me some ideas. You can do it in the chat. Um, ooh, a hot dog. All right. So, um, I'm going to go and I'm going to open up Google search and I'm going to type in hot dog. Okay. So hopefully this is all stays PG and clean, but we all know how Google works. So the risk of doing live. Who remembers how we're going to do a search for images that are high quality or high resolution? Who could help me out? All right. Anyone? So we got, we're going to search, press in the images tab, right? And then from there, how do I search for high resolution images? Anyone help me? We're going to go to the, oh, I see, I see tools in there, right? Alex said tools. We're going to click the tools button, okay? And we're going to go to size, right? We could go large. Now, there's a better way to do this. It's actually not in the tools button, but this is one way to get large images. I want to go bigger than just plain old large. This is still going to give me a lot of pictures to choose from, and some of them are not going to be that high resolution. I'm actually going to go to the settings, and I'm going to click advanced search. When I do that, I could narrow these searches down for image size. So if I click here where it says image size, I could actually pull down and I wanna say, let's go at least two megapixels. So when I do that, it's gonna get rid of all the low resolution images on the internet and it's gonna find anything with two million pixels or more. So we know there's gonna be decent quality on that. So let's go ahead and find a hot dog image that looks kind of cool. Any suggestions, audience? Make my life more difficult or good? How about this one here? Does that work? Is that boring and easy? All right. No feedback. So I saw Brendan shake his head a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy it. So I'm just going to right click and copy this image. And actually, you know what? With Chromebooks, can you guys, with PhotoP, I'm trying to remember now. I'm going to go ahead and save this image here. I'm going to go ahead and save it into my, onto my desktop. Oh, I got too many photos in there. Yeah, I'll just go to the desktop and I'm just going to call this one hot dog. That's not a good name for a photo of a hot dog. Hot dog. All right. So I'm going to save this to my desktop. Remember where you save this at. Okay, so we got one image open and I'm going to go ahead and go over to PhotoP and I'm going to open that one up. So file open to open an image. I'm going to go over to my desktop and there's my hot dog right there. Ooh, that's a low res image though. How can I tell it's a low res image? Do you guys see the little 2KB here? Two kilobytes is going to be probably tiny on your screens. That's showing me that's like the smallest image, like just a thumbnail. So I'm going to go back to my website because that one's gonna be a little bit funky. So I'm gonna click on my tab over here, cancel out. And I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna open it. And this is probably a Getty image block. Um, let's try this one more time. So I'm gonna save it again. I open it up into a new tab. And we'll come back. We're gonna replace that image, yes. And hopefully this one's a little bit bigger. So we'll go back to photo P. And I'm going to control O for the real G's in here. That's still looking pretty low res. Let's open this up and see how bad it is. Okay, actually doesn't look bad. Pretty good. Okay, so now how are we gonna combine this image with another one? So I need another audience suggestion. Replace arms with the hot dog. Somebody flexing replace the arms with the hot dog. All right, so whose arms? The Rock? <laughs> that one sounds really hard. This might be too advanced for us. Okay, we'll, we'll try it. Let's see how this works. Can you smell what The Rock is cooking? That was the worst impersonation ever, so don't judge me on that one. Okay, so I want to find something that's going to kind of work with the, uh, 
the image of the hot dog. How about first we're going to go find some high res stuff though, right? So settings, where else are we going? What's my option for finding high resolution images in here? Waiting for someone, anyone, Bueller, anyone? Brendan, yeah, come on, bring it. Other than the advanced search? Advanced search, thank you. All right, oh, okay. perfect. And then I'm gonna come down to two megapixels and I'm gonna hit advanced search so we could find some images that might work. So any suggestions on which one of these would make good hot dog arms? Probably something where we could see his whole arms, right? Maybe the Baywatch one? This one here? All right, I'm down. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this one because I already have the other one open. Actually, you know what? This is probably gonna be the base image. I probably should work with this one first. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this image as, and we're gonna throw it back into there. So we got it titled The Rock, that's perfect. Coming back to photo P and I'm gonna open up The Rock. So, okay, we got my image, right? So I have two image tabs open, if you notice. So you're gonna see here, it says the hot dog is image tab one and the rock is image tab two. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my hot dog image and I'm gonna drag it over to the rock. There's a couple ways I could do this. I can click my move tool so you guys can see the move tool here. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag that image and I'm gonna drag it up to the tab that says the rock and I'm not gonna let go yet. And then I'm gonna bring it down. All right, and then I'm gonna let go. So when I do that, I'm gonna end up with a separate layer over here with my hot dog. So here's my hot dog layer, right? And here's my background layer, which is the rock. Okay, while I'm there, do you guys notice how like my cursor changed to these curved lines? Can you guys see that? So on the curved lines, that means I could rotate this. So if I wanna get the hot dog into arm shape, we could do that pretty easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it into here. Now. That looks like it lines up pretty well. So we're getting close, right? Here's a couple tricks. If I wanted to do a better job of lining this one up, I could come over to the background, this hot dog layer, and I probably want to rename this layer. So let's go ahead and this gets really important if you're, oh, it's different in here. Never mind. Uh, I forgot to do that in Photo P. It's a little bit different in Photoshop. So I could reduce the opacity of this. So opacity is how see-through this layer is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make this layer a little bit transparent so I could kind of see his arms better. And then I could move this around so you guys you guys could see that it's kind of a little bit more transparent. Probably wanna give this a, maybe a little bit more twist just like that. Okay, so we have my hot dog that's lined up. Let's just say I want to make a second hot dog to organize this one, right? There's a couple of ways I could do this. I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus, the check mark to go ahead and set that change in here. I'm going to bring my opacity back to 100%. And then I'm going to right click on that layer and I'm going to duplicate it. So now I'm going to have two hot dog layers. So when I click duplicate, now I have two hot dogs. And the same thing, I could bring this one over. I could reduce the opacity a little bit to kind of give me that see-throughness. Sorry, I drug it out over the way. And we could bring that in, once again, kind of rotate that one up. Bring back the opacity so I could see it 100%. Okay, so we're doing pretty good, right? Looking okay? So the rock with hot dog arms. I'm gonna go ahead and Keep working on this same image and I'm going to go ahead and come down into my different tools. So in the fourth tool down, you guys are going to see a couple of check uh, selections here. So we have the quick selection tool, which works pretty darn well. And we also have the magic wand. Let's go ahead and start with the magic wand today. So the magic wand is a selection tool that chooses pixels of a light color. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit so I could kind of change. I can see what I'm be a little bit more selective. And using the magic wand, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the blue. So once I click on the blue, it theoretically should select anything that's blue in here. Um, this one actually grabbed quite a bit here. So this is really good. Okay, so who can explain what tolerance is? 
who's in the chat can tell me what tolerance is. Tolerance in the word, like any, like if we had to use this word in an essay, like Mr. Oliver, he doesn't show very much tolerance to his students. What does that mean? Right? So there's a museum of tolerance and torrents that um, talks about that. The amount of, let's go with understanding, with um, how much I accept. It is a, it's a very tough word to say. How accepting I am, right? So if I'm not very tolerant to other races, that means I'm only going to like people of a certain race and not others. That would make me intolerant if I said, I only like people from this race here, but I don't like people from this race, right? Now, if I'm tolerant that means i want people from all races i want equity everybody right so a high tolerance number in photoshop is going to be the same way so if i have a high tolerance in photoshop setting that means it's going to take pixels of all colors if i reduce this tolerance okay if we shrink this down when i select there it's going to choose less pixels so i'm going to go ahead and deselect with control d um i could also go select deselect and you kind of see that keyboard shortcut here for control D and I'm going to choose my magic wand tool again. I'm going to click on the blue and notice how it shows less blue this time. It didn't get all of it because my tolerance is a little too low. So I'm going to go ahead and take my tolerance up a little bit more, click on the 32 and that should be pretty good on my tolerance, right? I'm going to hit the delete key or the backspace key. And I'm going to deselect. And so we got rid of the blue pretty well, right? Not perfect. We might have to do some cleanup in it. Um, I could do the same thing. So same with the, the magic wand. I'm going to go ahead and click the white. And I'm going to zoom in. Oops. Control Z because I didn't want that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And just make sure that I didn't get too much of that hot dog bun. And I'm going to hit delete. So now... Looking pretty good, right? We're getting a little bit closer to this one. So I could move this around. I'm going to go ahead and control D. I could move this around. Do you guys see that little like effect that we have here, that little line? Can you guys see the little outline around here that it missed a little bit? So I'm going to zoom back out a little bit and I'm going to take my eraser brush. So if you scroll down here, you're going to see the eraser tool. Now, the eraser tool is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to erase whatever is selected or whatever we kind of paint over. So in here, you're going to notice we have a brush edge. So right now, I've got a brush that's 15 pixels wide. And can you guys see how small that is on your screen? It's a pretty small brush. I could make that brush bigger here. So if I want to include quite a bit of this, I could make my brush bigger. And I'm just going to simply draw over that extra line that we had from that outline. So I'm going to kind of clean it up in that regard. So we got our hot dog, right? Looking a little bit better. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and does anyone remember how to transform? We're kind of going back a few weeks, how to like rescale something, edit, transform, and then scale is one way to do it. We could also just hit control T. And I want to make this a little bit bigger because one rock's got some pretty fabulous arms, but mostly I just want to like resize this so that it's just fits up a little bit better. I'm going to hit okay. I could also control T this. Oops. Never mind. Control T does not work in photo peak because that's a Photoshop thing. Um, I would have to go edit, transform, rotate if I want to like move this a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of spin this around theoretically just a hair, move it over. All right, starting to look pretty stupid though, right? So now what I want to do is I want to kind of fade this in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my eraser, right? And then I'm going to choose, right now I have a hardness set of 100%. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of demo what this is going to look like with 100% hardness. I'm going to click on the other layer. And I'm going to just kind of delete. And you guys see the edges of that? See how it's super, like, a hard edge on that? 
if I do that same eraser move, but I take my hardness and bring it down to like, let's just say 0%, I could start to fade that in a little bit. So if I wanted to fade that hot dog in, we could do that. That was probably a little bit too much, right? So kind of see the difference between a hard edge and a soft edge. So like this might even be actually kind of like we could almost call this done right here, but so I can use that, that edge brush, that soft edge brush to fade it in a little bit better. That looks really bad, right? You guys agree? That looks bad. Okay. Laszlo, I'm going to go ahead and thank you for that suggestion a lot. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Okay. So that's the difference between our soft edge brush and our hard edge brush. So once again, hardness zero, we're going to be able to fade something in. Um, so if I wanted to come in here and just kind of like knock down the edge, I'm going to click back on my background layer for this hot dog. And I could kind of choose to fade that in a little bit to his tat. So it kind of fades the tattoos in. And you can see how it actually like starts to fade into that tattoo. So like you can see it like being able to like become transparent. All right. Does that make sense? So the other tool we have, and I'm going to go ahead and back up in history just a little bit. So if I click the history brush, uh, I'm going to come back here and we're going to go back in history a little bit. So I just step back in history and we're going to use the quick selection tool because I promised you three tools and I'm going to deliver three tools today. Just like you're turning in three photos. So the quick selection tool is going to be basically a paintbrush that I'm going to go ahead and paint on. And why is this one not working well? Oh, I have something selected on my other one. So I'm going to go ahead and control D to get rid of that. And that is not working. All right. We're not going to use the quick selection brush today. So I'm teaching you two tools today because this one's not working. So let me try this one more time. Quick selection tool. Yeah, for some reason. Oh, I know why. <laughs> because I was using the wrong tool, the wrong layer. Um, had to go back to the first one. All right. Um, we are having some technical difficulties with this tool. I'm going to command Z to get back there a little bit. Sorry about the challenge here. Quick selection tool. Gonna deselect. Yeah, for some reason this one's not working so well. This one works a lot better in Photoshop. So if anybody wants to demo on that tool later in Photoshop, I could do that. It's not gonna work well and I don't wanna confuse. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. Okay, so combining two photos. Anything else I could add to this photo? Oh, I have an idea. Let's go ahead and open my photos. This is going to be awesome. All right. I'm going to drag this on over. <laughs> Let's see if I can make this one look good. Um, we're going to grab Mr. Oliver and we're going to put his head on the rock's body because that looks good. So I'm going to drag it over. Right. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to set it down. All right, this is already looking really good. I'm already happy with where we're going. Okay, so next I want to do, right, I want to go ahead and resize this one. So making sure I have the Mr. Oliver layer set. I'm going to hit Edit Transform Scale. Ooh, and I still have my, hang on. Challenge number two today. Um, okay, so I could now, once again, resize. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the opacity like I showed you so we could get down. My head's a little bit too big, right, for the body, even though it's kind of looking probably like kind of funny, kind of artful. I'm going to go ahead and hold my shift key down so I don't like lose proportions. I'm going to try to line up the eyes the best I can. Ooh, we're getting pretty close. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and since my mouth doesn't quite match his face a little bit longer, I'm going to go ahead and drag the middle box so I can make it a little bit longer. Okay. And looking pretty close here, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my opacity back. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my eraser with a very soft edge brush. So my eraser's right. Oops, wrong click. I'm going to make sure that my brush is set to very soft. I want to go 0% hardness. And I'm going to start kind of painting in here. I'm going to get rid of all the excess background stuff here. Gosh, I am so hot. All right. Um, so it's going to kind of keep fading in. <laughs> If we go too far, what happens if we go too far? Can we undo it? Now, here's a cool tip. We could make our brush size smaller by using our bracket keys. But let's just kind of keep working. See if we could kind of It's going to be weird cuz he doesn't have a, he doesn't have any facial hair cuz I'm more manly, you know. <laughs> All right, this is really bad. Um Okay. So this is really horrible. <laughs> I'm cracking up. Um, I could also reduce the opacity of this layer when I'm done. If I want to like kind of give some, some of the skin effects, but yeah, maybe not. You know what? That's an art piece right there. I could turn that in and Mr. Oliver's giving me a hundred percent for the <laughs> A. So that is how we combine photos in Photoshop. Um, God, that's horrible. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and save now. So once again, we're going to save as a PSD in PhotoP, and Photoshop is just save as. And then I'm going to need to rename this, right? So in PhotoP, we can't rename it right there. Um, you're going to rename it. <laughs> Still laughing at myself. Um, first name, or sorry, last name, first name, and then combine photos. So that'll be how we name it. You're turning in three photos today, right? A JPEG of your finished art creation like this one. Um, ooh, I should probably, do, speaking of, I should probably clean that up a little bit. I had some leftover fuzz in there. Turn in three images today. Your two originals and um, at least two background images, right? So if you want to do three photos like I did, just turn in all three photos so I could have fun seeing where you came from this, all right? So I'm going to end the YouTube live. Um, I'm going to be back on Meet for questions. Of course, I would love to answer your questions, so we'll chat soon. Bye, class.